Today we are talking about how to create depth in your painting by using size. And by that I mean the idea that objects get smaller as they recede. So if we think of trees, generally you're going to have larger trees in front, smaller trees in the middle, and smallest in the background. Now that doesn't mean that you're not going to have a small tree in the foreground that's going to be smaller than a bigger tree in the middle ground. In other words, not all trees are all the same size. That rule of everything gets smaller as it recedes, or has to be smaller as it recedes, is true if everything is the same size. So there's nothing wrong with having, like here, this small tree in the foreground and bigger tree in the background. But if you're not aware of that, you can have something end up where everything is smaller in the foreground and everything is bigger in the middle ground. So it helps to be aware of the size differences and don't hesitate to maybe change some things. Like when I look at this, there's nothing unnatural about this tree being smaller. Uh, these two trees, there's two of them there. Actually, there's three. Uh, and those three, or four, being smaller than all the trees in the middle ground. And that tends to flatten out the painting just a little bit. So I don't need to change everything. I don't want everything in the foreground to be bigger than everything in the middle ground, but I don't want everything in the foreground to be smaller than everything in the background. So when I have something like this, I will uh, just raise up like in this tree here, bigger than these trees in the middle ground. Now the other two or three are still smaller than the middle ground trees, but it just takes one. Because again, you're not going to have everything in the foreground bigger than everything in the background. Um, that would look odd also, even though it would give you depth. But generally speaking, I want something in the foreground bigger than middle ground and background. Of course, you're going to have sometimes a flat field where there's no trees. The only trees are in the background. Um, then you have to use other things to create depth, like value changes in the field or a path of dirt kind of leading you back uh, and, and getting smaller as it recedes. Uh, but when you have trees like this, middle ground, foreground, and then background too, you want to make sure you get some variety in size that will create a feeling or a sense of depth. Same thing in the front here where you have these little shrubbery. Um, when they're all kind of the same size, it kind of flattens out a little bit. So again, just to make one of them bigger, the one in the foreground, and maybe have the darks a bit darker at the bottom. But this does create depth from here to here, just because of the size. And you don't want to fall into the routine again, like I said, it, it, you can have some things in the middle ground and background bigger than the foreground. But just really be aware of it. And if it looks flat, you, you can change it by doing some size changes. So another one here, all these are uh, in Colorado. <clears throat> Here you have all the trees in the background, and they're fairly big, and this does have some nice depth in it, uh, but it also is a little flat. Fence posts here, trees are roughly the same size as the fence posts. Not a big size jump as you go back. So I want to um, create a bit of shape here. So what I'm going to do is lift these trees up, make them bigger. Uh, put a small tree, but big because it's in the foreground. You know, this is still bigger than these, not by much. But it, it does create more depth. So as we compare the two, you know, there's depth there because the river goes back and it gets thinner. Um, and I would lighten up the shadows a bit more, like I did here. I cooled off, simplified these trees in the background, made them smaller, these bigger and then the tree here, bigger yet. Even though it's a small tree, it's in the foreground, so I'm getting it a little bigger. And that's going to create a bit more depth 
as it recedes. And if I have to do too much to create depth, to where I'm just making up so much stuff, I might as well not use the reference. I like what's going on here. It has a nice S shape, uh, nice variety of, of sizes and shapes. And I like to do cloudy day once in a while. I thought this uh, had a nice moody feel to it, but just a little too flat because of the size variation. I would also get um, a little bit lighter and grayer in the field back in here and maybe make these greens a bit stronger just to show more depth also. This is in Kansas. Um, <clears throat> I really like the, you know, the bridge is the center of interest. Secondarily would be the university on the hill there. Um, but it's a little flat, again, in sense that everything is somewhat the same size. Nothing is really big. A lot of this overgrown stuff, I would create just simple shapes of trees, have some flatter areas, just to get rid of a lot of this overgrown um, shrubbery and grass. It just kind of kills the foreground. But then I also want to get maybe something larger in the foreground to give me some scale now and some depth between the tree and the bridge and then the bridge and the building back there. And this is a pretty big tree. Um, and again, in my references, I have everything labeled by place and year. So I'll have like Oklahoma 2015. Not that I do much painting of Oklahoma, but anything, my, my Wyoming, Montana, um, or names of uh, cities I'm close to that I'm photographing. Um, but also, I will have subjects, so I'm, I, I kind of get double filed. Everything that's filed in a location file will also be in an object file, like trees, animals, uh, horses, things like that, people, figures. So I can go to my tree file and pick out a tree that I want to put into this scene. Because it's big enough that it helps to have the reference uh, to make sure you get um, enough information to add a tree in there. What I don't want to do is when I'm using two photographs like that is use you know, the tree, the foreground, a little bit of the middle ground, and then in another photograph I'm using the background, the sky, that gets too complicated. One photograph is the whole scene. It's 95% of the scene. Then I will pick one object from another reference to add to it. And the lighting has to be the same. I can't have a different lighting on this tree than I do on uh, the scene itself. So I have to make sure. Sometimes I have to flip it um, horizontally or vertically to, or not vertically, flip it horizontally to turn it around so that the uh, light's coming from the right direction. And that's the advantage of the computer in having uh, Photoshop as well. They do have, and I mention this a lot, but I'll mention it again, they do have free websites where you can insert your photography and you can adjust it, you can crop it, flip it um, around, do a lot with it. And uh, one of them is Pixlr, P-I-X-L-R, dot com and then pickmonkey.com p-i-c-m-o-n-k-e-y so those are good tools to use <laughs>